Ephesians chapter 4. Let's see what scripture says. Let's read from 20. It says, but ye have not so learned Christ. Not like the world. Who walk in the vanity of their minds. That is the mind that we had before. But that mind must change. He said, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard and have been taught. Notice the word, you have been taught by him. You have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus. This has nothing to do with denominational uh, preferences. Denominational doctrines, no. You cannot grow by denominational doctrines. You can't. That's why in 1 Peter uh, 2 2, it says, um, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk, the sincere, that word sincere is unadulterated milk of the word of God, that you may do what? Grow thereby. The unadulterated milk of the word of God. I already see that I can't finish this message today, but let's try. As the truth is in Jesus. Let's read on 22. It says, that, what should you do? This is the truth that is in Jesus. That you do what? Put off. What are you putting off? Concerning the former conversation, the old man. That's the, the man that you were. The woman that you were. The boy that you were. The girl that you were. The person that you were before you met Christ. Put it off. How can you put it off when you keep saying, that's the way I am, that's the way I am, that's the way I am? If you continue to identify with that old man, how can you change it? If you continue to accept that that is who I am, how can it change? It's not possible. Now so I be, now so I be, now so I be, now so I be, I say now so I be, now so I be, now so I be. Now so I be, now so I be, you will live and die like a lover. With the potential of becoming a butterfly, but never becoming it. Are you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? There is a place where you need to die to that self. That old you. That's what scripture is saying. It says that she put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. It is a deliberate action. It's a choice. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Let's read on. Verse 23. Everybody read this together. And be renewed in the what? Spirit of your mind. If you are not renewed in the spirit of your mind, verse 24 cannot take place. Let's see what it says. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. How can I put it on? There is a bridge that you must cross. There is a cocoon that you must be kept in. A cocoon that feeds your DNA. Where your DNA naturally begins to modify. And there is a shifting that takes place on the inside of you. Shifting. And that shift is from the schema of this world to the schema of the kingdom. Change inside, inside, not outside, inside. He says, renewed in the spirit of your mind. The attitude of your mind must change. The attitude of your mind must change. The attitude of my mind must change. The attitude of my mind must change. That means I must give up my old philosophy of life and take on the godly philosophy of life as revealed in the word of God. That means I must unlearn the ways of Egypt and learn the laws of God and implant those laws in my mind.
That means my outlook to life must become different. My viewpoint to life must become different. The remodeling of your viewpoint to life, your outlook to life, takes place inside that cocoon. It's a place where you and God alone can settle that matter. The teachers can teach you. Preachers can preach to you. They can't change you. When you take those words and you are there with God, that's where that takes place. I can tell you when the transformation in my life began. began. Let me just give you a few testimonies of me. I was a Christian many years without really understanding Christianity. I stumbled into information here and there. Some blessed me, some did not. Some tickled my fancy, others did not. I read the Bible. Hey, I didn't really have understanding of the scriptures. You know, I, I always used to say that if there was anybody who was a spiritual dullard, I think I was at a certain point in time in my life. I've told the story of how I used to take my friends, Gideon International Bibles, and, and go and mark the places where they marked in my own. So yeah, when I take from you, from you, from you, if you see my Bible, ah, it was really decorated. So anybody who sees my Bible, we assume that, man, this guy is devouring the word of God. But I wasn't devouring anything. I just didn't want to be left behind. So one day, I went into the bush to pray. I was alone. And I said to God, God, why can't I be like brother so, so, and so. I'm glad God didn't make me like that brother because that brother died in sin uh, many years after. But he was a brother that was full of testimonies and a good singer. And I just admired him. Why can't I be like him? They would come out and talk about what God told me. God said this. God did that. Me, I was deaf and dumb. I could not hear anything. God was not talking to me. I was everybody. God said, God said, God didn't say, God didn't know what is it called. You know? I was there in the bush all alone, sitting down on the floor. And I was crying to God and saying, God, I want, why can't I be like that? Why can't I be like this? I want to change in my life. I want to be, I want to become better. To become better. I want to experience what these people are experiencing. You know? Why? I, I read, I keep reading and nothing, you know, I was alone with God in the bush for hours, just talking. Then I walked away. There didn't seem to be any change, but it was okay. I can't tell you all the details, so, but I want to fast forward and, you know, summarize this. In my quest, I prayed passionately, desiring for that change. And God told me something which I began to do. And I've shared this before. From Psalm 2. Sorry, Proverbs 2. But I, I, I'm not there now. Then as I began to pray, I suddenly began to feel certain things. When I say feel, not physical feeling now, but on the inside. And then there was a time when I would be walking around and it looked like my heart was enlarging. The place was, my chest region would just fill up. And I was, kept wondering, what was going on? 
you know, I knew I wasn't ill uh, or anything, but that enlargement would be there. And then I started noticing that I wasn't getting angry like I used to. I noticed there was a certain calmness about me. I didn't understand where it was coming from. I was young. At this time, I was, I was head boy and captain of school. So I had a lot of work to do. School, my own school work, and then attending to the entire school. It was a mixed school then, male and female. But you know, shortly after that, people began to know me more for my Christian faith than for my being the captain of school. My Christian faith just you know, began to shine brightly. And I began to hold meetings with the fellowship. And everybody just deferred to me, not necessarily because I was the president of the fellowship, but there was just something. So one day, this continued. And I went to God and asked, Lord, what is happening to me? And he said to me, I'm enlarging your heart. I'm enlarging your heart. I'm increasing your capacity to receive and understand my word. I'm enlarging your heart. Say, but it's physical heart. He said, no, it's not physical. That is a sign to draw my attention to what he is doing. So that I can recognize what he is doing and follow his instructions. What were his instructions? Pray more. Study the word. Proverbs 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide them, hide my commandments with thee. If thou wilt receive my words... And hide my commandment with thee. My son. No, go on. Next verse. So that thou incline thine ear unto what? Wisdom. This is no longer the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom that is of God. And apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah. If thou criest after knowledge. A quest for knowledge, a quest to know, a seeking that cannot be quenched, a pursuit of the knowledge of God. And liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her, as for heed treasures. So at that time, um, I went into, into the study at home then, and I took out the Encyclopedia Britannica, and I brought it out, and I began to read on seeking silver. And I realized that silver was hidden deep inside the earth's crust. And I began to read about the labor that went into exploring for silver. Wow! That night, it just downed on me that, wow, to, deep, to, to dig deep for the hidden treasures of God must require much more effort. Than to seek for silver. Which is inferior. So I began to ask myself questions. So, so it is no longer sufficient just to do this or just to do that or just to have this. Then I began to dig deep. I would burn the midnight oil as people say. Read all night. Do a woko for the word of God. And I kept reading and reading and reading. I was devouring scriptures. My understanding was not opening. 
But I kept reading. And just kept reading. And just kept reading. And I kept praying. And I kept meditating. And from time to time, I would discuss with friends and with others about the word of God. Have you considered this? Have you read this? And some of them will come, oh, yes, oh, you don't read this part. I say, which one? And they will send me this. We will read through. We examine scriptures. We do. That became my lifestyle. That became lifestyle. In the place of prayer, I began to have some encounters with, with the Holy Spirit that were unique. I don't want to get into them because it's not about me. I just want to help you to understand a little bit about the transformation process. And I can say to you that there is no person who has or who is experiencing transformation who did not have a similar encounter with God. It's not about head knowledge. There's just something that comes from there because of your interaction with the Holy Spirit in prayer, in study, in prayer, in study, in prayer, in study. One of the things that happens is that your mind is, is being changed. You are beginning to learn new principles. The best book of the Bible to me in those days was the book of Proverbs. Because I saw principles of wisdom. And I would read the King James and I would read Good News Bible. Those are the two Bibles I was reading mostly in those days. Because the Good News just has its own way of putting some of those things in very simple language. And then living Bible. And I was learning, assimilating Learning, assimilating, learning, assimilating. I didn't understand what change was going to take place, but certain things began to change. Some things began to fall away. Some new things just began to break forth. A change was taking place on the inside. Not the outside. On the inside. There was something going on. Let's read on a little bit. Then he says... Shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and do what? Find the knowledge of God. Then, then, let's see again what he says. He says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Let's take one more. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Transformation starts inside. I'm touching my belly because I say it's the mind, but the mind is not the brain. But the mind. Let me start rounding up for now. What do I need to do, therefore? Number one, I have to deliberately lay aside all those things that belong to the old life. Because you cannot sow among thorns. And you must break up your fallow ground first. So that the Holy Spirit and implant his word inside you. So you lay aside. You lay aside. Two, spend time fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Spend time fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, prioritize it. And I'm not talking about prayer where you are petitioning God, God, I want this, God, I want that. God, no, it's not about God, I want. I don't want any, I just want you. I want to know you. I want to know you. God, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to know you. 
I want to know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. I want to know you. I want to know you, that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. I want to know you. Be consistent. That would be number what? Be consistent. Number three or number four? First is to lay aside. Second is to Spend time, okay, that's what I thought about. Okay, number three would be to study. Study the word. Study the word. Discuss the word. Study the word. Meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. All of that. In number three. And that's where fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit comes, becomes... Uh, Significant because it is the spirit who opens our understanding. Uh, when he, the spirit of truth, is, is come, he it shall, it shall guide you into all truth. All. You know. And then four would be... Sorry? Be consistent. Thank you. That would be number four, would be consistent. Be consistent. Consistency means that you continue. Whether you are feeling anything or not, whether you are seeing any change or not, continue. Continue. It's a fruit. The fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says. So it is something that, that flows out naturally. Uh, it's not a compliant, uh, a matter of compliance. Uh, I, I'm not saying, oh, if you're lying, just keep lying or I'll wait until the Spirit of God will... Make me. That's not what I'm saying, so don't get that wrong. Because you have to lay those things aside. Uh, but the transformation that takes place, you see, one of the things that will happen if when, while we are being transformed is that there will, be, there will be a breaking forth of your interaction with the Holy Spirit and you will begin to experience the gifts of the Spirit more than you have. And if you've never had any gift of the Spirit, it will open up. It's like you're on, on leading a fountain. Let's just take one more scripture for the book of Colossians, chapter 1, and then I'll, I'll stop at that. I, I want to believe that everybody has understood this. All right? Three verses, 9, 10, and 11. For this cause... We also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with what? The knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Since the day we heard that you are believers, then we began to pray this. Now you notice that, why was he praying this? It's because he wants to accomplish a transformation. He says, I travail, I again travail in birth until Christ is formed in you. All the things we are talking about now is the formation of Christ. It's the mofo. It's not a schema. Are you following this? The formation of Christ in you. And the formation, it's who you are on the inside. The, the larvae that becomes the butterfly is designed that way. That's, that's, his DNA is, is for it to move from this stage to another stage and then to the butterfly stage. That's, that's his, his life circle. And that's how it should be for us as believers. Our life circle is clear. Newborn babe, then you grow out of it until you become a mature man in the faith. The Bible says, unto the fullness of the stature of Christ. 